Welcome to episode three of Mochi versus Abe the Snake, the cash game. I am your host, Justin Knoll. And in last episode, Abe was down 12 points and made his way back to even, which is where we will pick up today. Uh, recently, I did an interview with Abe that will be coming on my channel soon, so look out for that. Talks about his history growing up, how he got introduced to the game, how he got his nickname, The Snake. Among many other things, we talk about some of the cheating that has happened to him over the years in this game as well. And just other things in general, so just stay tuned for that. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Let's get to the rules one more time before we begin our game. Let's recap those. So we have our normal tournament time clock setting of a 12 second delay time, except there will be no reserve time. Any extra second that they use will cost them one and a half percent of a point. So that can add up pretty quickly. So you'll notice them moving at a really, really, really quick pace. And that's the reason why there's a penalty involved. Dice on checkers is a legal roll. So the dice land on top of the checkers and they're flat. They're not cocked. They just get to play. They don't have to re-roll. And the delay time can be reset if the dice are rolled off of the playing surface or the dice are cocked and the clock can be reset for that. Gentleman rules, of course. Uh, the Jacoby rule is in effect, which means nobody can win a gammon unless the cube has been turned. And they are also playing with beavers. We haven't seen any beavers yet. Who knows if one will happen? Only time will tell. So, all right, double sixes, of course. <laughs> Four one slot, good play. Five four should probably just yeah. Leave five one okay. All right. So the match is currently tied, but we have an interesting position here. Is there a two? No, no two. Two one pick and pass, perfect. Double threes, okay, that's not fair. Double. <laughs> Abe has passed so little in this match that he can't even find the button. <laughs> he passed. <laughs> All right. One, two, slot. Five, one, split. A six. I think you could cover with the six and then play six to five. It might be better than giving him the numbers to hit like that. Three, two. Okay. We can make the 11 and just come forward. I don't know why we would stay on the 18 here. He's got spares. It's not generally beneficial to stay on the... 18 point when the guy has a spare on the eight and a spare on the 13. Hmm. All right. Five, three makes the point three, one. Oh, now he wants to move off of the 18. Okay. At least he lifts the blot. That's good. Four, four. No. What's the roll here? Six four? Okay. Double sixes. That doesn't quite seem fair. Now you have to point on the guy. Hmm. Four six in and out. Can he fade the three? Six five. Oh my goodness, it hits the hard way. Fuck. <laughs> Dice on fire. You got a hit. And now you can think about the cube. No, he didn't double. All right. I guess he's happy he didn't. 
Five two makes the point. Five two makes the three point. Five two five two makes the three. What is this? A running play. He missed it. What's the number? One two. Eight to six for diversity. Four three okay. In and out. I guess he has no problem entering today. He has no problem getting hit either, apparently. 6-2 doesn't go anywhere. 6-4 points. 2-6. Oh, my goodness. Oh, double twos. <laughs> and he passes without even letting Mochi touch the cube. New game. <laughs> Uh, man. Six three splits. Three two. Up and down. Six four points. One four. Okay. Good roll, it hits. Ace four, I would come in on the... You gotta deal with that stack of checkers. I think a lot of uh, backgammon problems are like distribution problems that need to be solved, you know? You've got these giant stacks of checkers and the computer is looking for the most efficient way to use them, right? So why not just enter and slot three one. 13, 10, 6 to 5, I guess. There's nothing else constructive. If he misses you, you can attack him. But he doesn't miss you. Boy, 5, 5. That's just not even right. That's illegal in all 50 states, including the District of Columbia. 4, 3. Split and hit. For the tempo, just the three, okay. He's thinking about it. He doubles, it's not a double. Four, two. You cover the deuce. Wow, all of these plays are super close. Makes no difference, the four enters. Okay, wow. Looks like it hits and covers and does everything except make me dinner. Oi. Six, six. Golly. I guess it's a good thing he cubed. Time to point on the guy. <laughs> he would have lost his market by a country mile. And now it looks like Gammon City, population Abe Snake. Oh, lift it. Wow. That was right, too. I. That was a great play, lifting. I I don't think I could have found that one. I mean, I guess what's the benefit? You're just winning a gambit anyway. Three guys on the roof. What are your chances of winning a backgammon by covering? Right? So you don't need it to win. I can see the legitimacy of lifting the guy. I just don't know if I could have done it. That's all. So the three and six in like this... Even, even on the outside distribution, just in case he rolls big doubles or a big clearing number like this. Now he's even again. Okay, now he's even odd. If he fans, there are some shot leaving numbers like big doubles. This is not a big double. 5-4, and he is gammoned again. These rolls here are just for the PR. No, okay, he resigns. Wow. Wow. You know, just when you had the score tied, you had to play more games. I would have stopped right then and there. We got a few games in. Time to go. <laughs> oh, okay, the 5-2 splits. Which was a, a question on James Bogle's opening section in his book there. What do you do with the 5-2 on the first roll? So not all of the questions are hard. 
five, six. Okay, six, four makes the 18. That's a great shot. Six, one. No, you just slot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't touch the back guy. And he can consider... No, no, he's got just uh, one guy back. Nowhere near a cube yet. 13, seven. Four, three, okay. Uh, stepping up, interesting choice. Down a trillion in the race allows him just to play over you. Okay, he feels like he feels like uh, I'm happy running, but uh, really, Why are you running? Why are you running? you're down in the race. <laughs> Double. What is this? He's back on the. He's back on the. What? Beaver. <laughs> Oh my goodness, well, not a cube, but certainly not a beaver. What on earth? And he rolls the du doubles and he gets off of the thing and... Oh my goodness. Now he's down 12, 19, 14, double ones, okay. 5-4, that makes up some ground in the race. Be funny if he pulls this one out. Beavering the mochi man. This guy, he lost his mind. Yeah, no, put a checker on the three. That's good. It's good for the for the bear off. Okay, yeah, yeah, do it. Two one. Okay. You can't roll those and try to win a race. Six five. There goes your racing lead. Four two. I think Mochi is up by one. 6-2. Mochi's down by 7. Mochi's down 1. Getting dangerously close to the recube here. Not after 6-5. Okay. He can fill in the gap on the 3 later with his next 3. And go to the 1 point. So you can roll a 1 and take a checker off. I hear ones are bad numbers, and it'd be good to take checkers off with them. Five, three. What's this? Oh, another two, one. Hey, what's the, the race now? Four pips? Five, four. Six, three. Okay, he's hanging in there. Oh! Boxes. Let's go. Four, three. You can feel it with the way he rolled the dice. Eight ball, quarter pocket. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wee, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Beaver. I think it was like a 30% error to beaver that, which means it was about a 15% error to double it. But that's Abe's secret weapon. Beaver, the number one player in the world. See how he deals with the pressure. <laughs> that's the way to keep it close. You know, the guy has a significant uh, skill edge. So... In order to overcome that, it really is, in my opinion, a good idea to increase the volatility. Dice on checkers is legal. Make the points. Yes, and the other one. And if he doesn't hit you, you give him the thing. If he doesn't anchor, give him the thing. Okay, he does hit you. And you hit back. All right, warm the cube up. Warm it up. Unless he rolls like aces. Four, six. Okay, give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. No. 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 No, 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 no. Hit. Enter. Low. Hit on the four. Punish him. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe we missed that cube there. Look at all the blots. Three-point board. No-point board. Blots here. Blots there. Blots everywhere. Yikes. 
Okay. Anchor. All right, looks like a good no double to me. <laughs> looks like a good no double to me. Double threes, yep, okay. I see. Abe is a psychic, good no cube. Re-establishing that 24 point anchor like a professional. Now I can take in any position. Three, two. One, six, just in and out. Five, four, okay. Well, the four covers. Yeah, that seems obvious. Three, one, just comes off the 18. Yeah, yeah. Four, two, hits. Mochi never misses. You can't win world championships missing. Fan, cube, take. I mean, who didn't know Abe was taking, right? <laughs> now we know we can place bets on these. You got to give me odds to think that he's passing, though. No, no, just aim at making the, the four, I think. Wow, that was a great shot, that anchor. Three and... Okay, you have an ace to spare. You don't have to come into direct contact yet. This 4-1 plays easy. 6-1. Guess you gotta hit the guy. No ace, but a 4-3. That's good. 5-1. Yeah, I like 2-1 to one here. That way you can see the eight point is aiming at filling in the two, whereas if he just moved that other checker one forward, none of his sixes would have covered the ace, obviously, right? Because they would have been seven away. This is a common theme. He has to volunteer, and he gets missed. Three, four, runs. Not as good as hitting, clearly. Four, four. That just seems a little unsavory. What's the thought here? To the ace instead of covering. Wow, what a play. Even though the difference is like marginal according to three ply and four ply, the fact that it showed up as number one shows that even in that time that he had to look at the position, he was able to see some combination of numbers that would have been bad had he played it the other way. Signs of a true professional. Double sixes. That's also one of the signs of a true professional. Can't make money playing this game if you don't roll double sixes when it's needed. Now here's Abe again trying to roll. Oh, shot time. Ah, the hit's right. Could have taken two off. He fanned, of course. 3-1. No men off. Staying even on the outside just in case he fans. Because 5-3 would have left a shot and then the 3 would have hit. He saw it all in the crystal ball. Man. 6-5. 4-3. 6-2. And Gammon City. Population Abe Snake. And the score goes up. Whew. Man. Oh, sound effect time. Huh. Man, I'm exhausted just... Whew. Like, how's your stamina training running off those gammons, right? Wish you did a few more wind sprints. Five, six, I would just come out. Four, six is a hitter. Oh, wait, what? 24, 18, eight to four is the best play? I need to remember that sequence again for the future. What is that? Three, two, split. Five, four, hit. Five, six, six, four is a non-hitter. Huh. That one needs to go on a on a quiz for the future. <laughs> I fucking 
Snap takes. Fakes the fold. 5-6. Wishes he folded. With two on the roof, you just want to lay your checkers on the outside. If he doesn't roll the four, you attack with a vengeance and a fury unlike the world has ever known. The four two points. Yes, it's a good roll. What do you think? Abe's going to hit you from the roof. He does. Okay, there's a little life, a little life. Five, six hits back. Five, four. Oi. Six, three makes the three point. What's this? What's this? Three, one. Wow. I think I like the structure better. Okay, three, two. I definitely like the solid structure better now. Now you're in this little funky thing where you really would have liked to have uh, made the three, then had the bar really restraining the checkers that are stuck on the 24. You know, I mean, look at the equity in this position. Blue is barely an equity favorite at plus 175. And uh, <laughs> and white's just sitting on the roof. But the thing about fanning here is, is it's just helping his timing. Okay, you, you know, like... He wants to be down in the race a lot in order to be able to hold an ace three game. He wants to be down like a hundred pips plus. Making the bar. I like that play. Does the bot like it? No, he says it's a little wrong, but I I, I like squeezing the checkers on the 24. You know, what's he he's never gonna hit you with a five. Aces will not hit. You know, what are you going to do? Blitz the guy with five guys back? Of course not. He doesn't even consider it. Abe knows. I've taught him well on these positions, by the way. And then Abe adds his own special sauce to the mix. Don't forget, coming up soon on my channel, we have an interview with uh, the Abe Snake, where he discusses his life as a professional gambler since his college years, which are long gone. <laughs> uh, I thought it was a great talk. I can't wait for other people to see it, too. Talks about where he got his nickname. 5-3. Oh, my goodness. Hey. Yeah, this looks good. Aiming to make the three. Six, one, no shots yet. Cover, cover, cover first. Three, one, okay, that's safe for now. Make it an in, yep. You'll notice they're just building your board, building your board. Five, three doesn't even play. That's a really good roll. Double twos. He runs, activating the threes, right? Now the threes have to play, and now he gets a shot. He wouldn't have had to have left the shot otherwise. And now, a three. Let's go and just come off of that and just go into the outfield. You've already got coverage over the two six, so you don't need to... No, now we hit you with two six. That can't be... Oh, I thought I saw it. Double. Pass, of course. And the Abe Snake rears his ugly head, but you can't give him the 2-6 there, right? Like, especially if the guy fans and you can double pass, why give him a Super Joker 2-6 to, like, potentially win? Where you could just come out, cover that 2-6. You'll have 17 direct sixes to hit, plus some of the other indirect numbers as well, right? So even on his best sequence of numbers, you're still like, you know, even money to hit. Maybe a favorite to hit. Don't allow the guy's best number to be good when you can avoid it and still make it decent for yourself. 6-3 just stacks it up. 
Wow, it's interesting to see how close just running is, right? Because he has no spares on the structure. Yeah, he can't even anchor. I, I would go 24-23. It puts pressure on the on Mochi's eight point. When the eight point is stripped like that, when he when he goes to to point on you or attack you with that, he's breaking a point to do so. So that back checker can step up to essentially attack the other point. Double force doesn't cover, but he can switch, right? He can switch, put two in the air, and then maybe play the other one down again or go to the five. Maybe you don't break the mid. Double ones would be like extra devastating. He doesn't switch, okay. Three, six. Four, four. Fans. Super close to a double here. Wow. I can't believe this isn't a cube, by the way. I mean, I know there's structure in front of you, but the guy's on the roof behind a five-point prime. You've got two numbers that are going to exit. But I guess if he enters, his counterattack might be real, like this. Okay. One, five hits back. Whew, what a shot. And this game is over. And Mochi should pass with the quickness. Oh, wow, it's small. Well, maybe you should take this then. If you think the guy's going to be outplayed by you, right? Which he's likely to be. I think you step up with the two for the same reason before. Yeah. That he can't just see. He would have just made the bar if you stayed back on the 24. But now making the bar leaves a double shot. And he's forced to expose himself again. 6-5 fans. That's rude. 5-1 covers, and I would make the 8 again, yep. 5-6 fans again if Mochi wins this one. Whew. What's the roll? 2-4? Okay. 4-4, four, four, brutality. A 6. All right. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Doot, 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 doot. Why is this better? I have no idea. Three one should make the seven. Get all your ducks in a row. Two six from the bar. The Fogerland. Oh my goodness. Ay. Well, is that all it takes to win a game of backgammon? <laughs> Fan forty eight times and roll the best number available. It's fine by me. I don't mind winning that way. Oh, man, he got hit. And slot the... No, 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 don't slot the eight for the reason I stated before. Now you've got all the coverage here. And ace is hit. Five's point. Look at Mochi duplicating the aces. Trying to pick up the other checker. He's able to enter and safety it. 2-6. Jumps off like it's nothing. He just knows. And when you know, you know. 7-3. Twice. Points. Okay. I'd say Mochi's still in the driver's seat, but maybe not for long. 2-3. Attacks. Boom. And if he doesn't roll an ace. Ace-6. He does roll the ace. The best one. And slaps the checker on the bar. Just in case you missed it. 2-4. Wow. 6-3. Okay. He only gets hit with 5-2. Five, 5-3. Five, Double ones. I want you to notice, like, the technique here is just putting everybody in a row, hoping to then just make the next point in line, right? So if you do get a shot later, it can win. Often people just go into gammon saving mode just, like, way too early, right? And then by sheer luck, they get a shot, hit a shot, and then they don't even get to win because they didn't build their board. They were in gammon save mode, so everyone's just stacked up. There's no prime. 
And listen, in these spots, the best way to save Gammon is to win the game. Okay? So, just take it from me. Stop this Gammon save, stack, 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 and just build your board. You'd be surprised how often you get a shot, and if you hit it, you can actually win instead of just being lucky that you save Gammon and still losing the game at the end. Okay. 3-1. Well, what is this? You're not volunteering anything, so just clear the six. Guy's got a five-point board. You're up in the race like 22. Four four does not point on him. Two off. Six three. He's staying. Okay. Seems okay. While you still have a five point board, you don't lose many gamins here. You have to stay now, though. Four two still safe. Six five. Two six. 6-4. I mean, I've seen worse before. But he needs boxes. He did not roll them. 5-1. Okay, I don't think I've seen this before, though. This is resignable. I think. No, I guess 2-1, 2-1, 2-1. 3-1, though. Game over. Now Abe's only down two points. Six five run. Four three split and come down. Three two should hit and come down. Oh, double hit. Yeah, okay. My style is a bit more pure, but um, that's odd for Abe. He hates putting a checker on the one point. I would have uh, bet money on him making the pure play here. Now he has the ace point made. And he always says when you have the ace point made, you can't win anymore. Which clearly has been refuted by modern computers. But not only does he not have a modern computer with a backgammon program on it, he doesn't have an old computer with a backgammon program on it either. Which is just fine by me because I play with him often. <laughs> 5-1, okay. This is a decent. I mean, I have no idea how White is going to bring this game home. You can see they're a dog here. They've got the 22-point uh, anchor with two points made behind it, so there's like zero prime value, zero blitz value. Hit, and he gets to hit back. You must hit back. You have the guy outboarded. What's that? 5-4? So 4 and then the 5 hits. Can't let him just clean all those blots up. 2-6. Okay, wow. This is volatile. 5-5. Five, five. Make the ace. And then just come down 13-8, to eight, I think. You don't want to hop out into the outfield and accidentally get double hit. 3-1. Has to be a hitter. Anything else would be uncivilized. What's he thinking about? What? You must have known. You see me in that position. I, I don't double because I, I don't know if I'm going to roll the four. <laughs> If I can be guaranteed to hit it, maybe I'll cue, but like, okay. Uh, I mean, it's clearly a market loss. Hit. Four, six. Hmm, so he still has two on the roof. I'd make the seven and eight. He did block the double fours, though. I'm just always worried about quick entries here and then having too many blots and then trying to, like, safety everybody and clean them up. 
So even though I know the seven and eight don't really have any like actual priming value, it does offer a certain level of like safety on the on the sequences where he does enter two and you're stuck scrambling to clean up. Gives you good landing spaces to bring everything else home as well. A three. The Abe Snake cometh. Three, six, okay. The six hits again. Don't stop till you get enough. Four, three, enters both, okay. Mochi is up Shit's Creek. Oh, he enters and hits. Oh, that was the critical one. He needed that one. Three, one. Doesn't hit. He makes the 12, okay. Five, six, too bad. Five covers, three, two. Oh, no, definitely come out. Definitely, you got too many checkers stacked there. You have to come out. So that was the five. I would have just come off the 20. I don't like playing with so many blots. He enters with a good number, hits you, you fan, and then it's blot city. I mean, look, look what, I mean, I know it's a lucky sequence for that to happen, but sometimes you have to consider that and play for those lucky sequences. Oh, wow. Leaving the shots there to being made was a blunder. The pick and pass play was right. Was it a blunder? No, small error. It's in the green. So white has two on the roof. So the only number that can legitimately hit you right now was if you were to put a checker on a spot that could be hit by double fours, which I'm sure Mochi is uh, trying to avoid, though he still has that checker. Yeah, I'd get it off of there. Four one, six two, or what was that? Not six two, four two. Okay. I mean, with the ace and deuce made gaps on threes, fours, and fives. Even if he gets a shot, there's like almost no way to contain it. I would have gone seven to six there for the gammon saving crossovers. Six, five, two out. Six, four, four, three. Okay, so Mochi needs to not roll a six, one, five, one, four, one, because those all leave shots. Five, three, okay. And you can see Abe now has to race off of another gammon. Doesn't feel like fun. So 5-1 slot, Abe was mixing it up there. Cover, come out. Down is also reasonable, going for that prime. It does duplicate the sixes to hit you in cover. He rolled a 5-2 and is downgraded to the three. He doesn't even get to make the five, okay, and just come down. Solid four structure against the three point on the other side. Double twos gets to come up though. That's very strong, equalizes. Six, four, hits. Three, five, down. Two, one. Yep. Abe is now in control. Three, one, wow. Three, two. So now it's a five, three. You can't go anywhere. Two down. Everyone is aiming at making the five now.
Hmm. You just run. Oh, you can make the five. Oh, wow. The five is a blunder. You just you just have to roll a six immediately next roll or your board starts to crunch. Tough play. How do you deny yourself the five point when everything we've taught ourselves about backgammon is like, make the five, make the five, make the five. It's the greatest point in the world. And now you have to pass. It's small though. Maybe you take. So the thought here, right, where it's a 0 0.036 error to take this cube, right? But if you can reasonably assume that you're going to play better than your opponent, or you can assume that your opponent is going to make mistakes that make up for that equity, and you're strong enough to play your side relatively clean, and you have good redoubles in, built into your system, then those small passes might be worth taking, you know? I think, personally, right? We could go against the bot. Because humans don't play that well. On average. And I guess in the, the vein of not wanting him to clean up those blots, we have to completely occupy him with the hit just in case he rolls the six. Four, five, hit outside. Oh, oh, he wasn't even on the roof. Huh. Double six. Give him the thing. Give him the thing. Double. He thinks about it, you know, like, oh, is it even a cube, you know? He's trying to trick the guy. Well, how about that for a roll? Points on him, steps up. Oh, four, three, what a shot. Three, two, he's still stuck back there. Gotta hit him. Hmm. Three, five, enters, makes the eight. Structure, structure. Right? Maybe he doesn't leave, and then you get to just cover. Four. You need a four. There's a four. Four, three. Okay. Just uh, come down and... Uh... Yeah. Now you're just a half a roll away from a six prime. Ooh, the nine. Super strong. Six, five. Oh. Why does that have to... See the benefit of the guy being on the 22 instead of the 24, right? He couldn't make the point. He had to just do something else. Now he's at the edge of the prime. 3-6 does nothing. Oh, 6-4. But he can't He can't clean up the guy. 4. 4. Does he roll a 4? Four? 4-6. Four, he's out. Four, five. Four, two. I guess just makes the four point. Anything else seems a bit much. With two guys back like that, you know, he needs the pure structure to give himself the time to exit, right? You can't just have high gaps and allow the guy to come in, come out. When you're stuck back like that, you need purity to win. Right? You need him to really be trapped so he can start coming forward. You can't just let the guy come out, right? 6-4 is a pointer. Three, four fans. Give him the thing. Give it to him. Wow, look how easy this take is. Wow, look how easy this scoop. He may never roll another four. Or he rolls one. What is Abney? Double aces? No way! Oh, I thought that was for... I thought that was for Mochi. 2-3, okay. 2-1. <laughs> Look at this roll. He has to break the prime. 
Oh man, if Mochi rolls the double aces again. He rolled it a roll too early. There's no way he can roll it again. <laughs> a collective sigh of relief. While the four comes out, the ace comes in. He's still crossing his fingers. Misses. Wow. Two one finally covers. Don't roll double twos. Ooh, I saw the first two. Uh. All right. Well, now Mochi gets to try to race off this gammon. It's about time, to be fair, you know. Whew. Good distribution here. Five, three should just clear. It's good to win games. If the gammon comes, the gammon comes. Don't need to force it in this spot. His board is still pretty good. Looks like he should be able to get off of this. 5-4. Yeah, oh, man. Okay. Looks like everything gets off. Yep. Man. I thought after Abe's double sixes, he was going to have a chance. Mochi is uh, plus one now. They're discussing over the board how it could be so even. Backgammon is a dice game, of course. And now it is break time. All right, guys. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're going to go to the Super Grandmaster Analysis with Mochi right now. All right. And then stay tuned for episode four, which is going to be over on Mochi's channel, which I'm sure I'll get to recording over the weekend. All right. So here we go. <laughs> subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. First 1,000, then we're on our way to 10 million. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the Super Grandmaster Analysis portion of this video, starring the world's only Super Grandmaster. <laughs> Masayuki Mochizuki, otherwise known as Mochi. And uh, how are Hello. you today, sir? <laughs> hey, I'm great. I, I'm still in the quarantine hotel, um, but it's the last day. I, I will be released. Um, if I'm negative, then I'll be released today. And I'm very happy about that. So you'll be released on good behavior. Is there any, pro <laughs> is there any, is there any probation period? <laughs> After your stay well, I, in, I, I still do uh, quarantine at home for next seven days or so. Oh, so there um, is a probation but... period. I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Oh man! Wow. Okay. Well, let's get to the uh, get to the match here. So one interesting thing happened in this match, uh, and we'll get to it. I don't know whether or not to ask. Then I'll ask. Well, we'll get there shortly. We'll get there shortly. So let's start on uh, game 21. Breeze through here. Doesn't look like there were any errors in this game. He fanned. There was a cube. He passed for once. And game 22. All right. I have a position here flagged. And it is move number eight. There is a cube. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I got chicken. I mean, I, I should have a double this one. So many numbers, like any four dance is huge mega loser. Any like one, six, two, six, three, six, or three, two, two, one. I have so many hitters on any fun followed by hits, uh, huge mega loser. So I. I had to double, but I, I didn't because, you know, what happened if I don't hit and he cover or what happened if I hit, but he enters and anchors, you know, bad imagination. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, I don't know if that speed, I would have doubled this either. I, 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 so, I mean, 
if we no look excuse. at that's that's just stupid i think well i mean it, it, if we look at the analysis though on the side i mean you only win 57 percent of games mm-hmm. right so with such low yeah. winning chances it's really just gammons that makes this a cube yeah yes uh, uh plus uh, this is a highly volatile position that next role is going to decide the outcome pretty much. So um, it's like, you know, ending game, you have check on the five and check on the deuce, so you have to double. Yeah. It's super volatile here. So due to the volatility of the situation, you know, if you roll the four or you roll a number that hits uh, on the inside, any fan, the position just becomes overwhelmingly too good. Yeah. You can just blitz them mm-hmm. out from there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what makes a good cube isn't just uh your winning chances or your gamma winning it's it's really just the volatility in the position whether or not you, you have enough market losing sequences to where yeah everything is combined you know the market losers and volatile and of course jacoby you have to activate gammon to win gammon you know you have to double to activate gammon yeah, the Jacoby rule is interesting, right? Uh, not being able yeah. to win an undoubled gamut, it, it, it favors, uh, it forces you to cube and be more aggressive with the cube in these money situations because you can't be timid and then just roll your good sequence and then just hope to play on. You have to really mm-hmm. be willing to take a chance with the cube and not mm-hmm. in these situations. Wow. I don't know if I've really seen a cube. I mean, outside of maybe like an end game sort of position where your your winning chances are this low, but it's still such a massive cube. 57% well, is... Uh, yeah. Well, you don't need to see the winning chance here to to find a double here. This is uh, obvious double. You hit, it's a gamut, so... Yeah, and the race lead, I'm sure, as well, maybe. Yeah, 37 pips, mm. something to fall mm-hmm, back mm-hmm. on yeah, even, even if you don't hit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if it, things go going, going bad, you're still okay, you know. Yeah. I, I could see this being really hard, especially with the uh, the, the, the dead checker on the three-point, but I, I can see just all the sequences where you hit any fans, the position just becomes really too good. And then we have this... 2 1 again on the next shake. How, um, this is also a cube. Is it just the same reason as before? Just any ace or any number that escapes or any number that hops out and gets missed just ends up being a huge market loser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ace and dance. Ace followed by dance or six five. Or like uh, double four and double sixes. So how many numbers altogether? It's like 13, 14, 15 numbers. Uh, huge numbers. Huge market losers. I mean, all right, any ace can can be, you know, market losers. And six five, double four, double six it would be a market loser. So. And so just the race in this position, I'm sure, is you know, like if you had a shot in this spot with this sort of board, but the race was closer, you wouldn't have a, a cube, right? Because if the guy mm-hmm. entered, mm-hmm. he would still have racing chances, probably, right? Yeah, yeah. And in this instance, uh, he wouldn't. And but uh, oh, yeah. of course, in uh, in practice, it's not going to be a double because I did not double Lord before. So how come I could make a double here? So exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't blame myself. You know, this is just first one is a stupid. So second one is just borrowed. Yeah, and I was surprised to also see uh, the the two one. Like the lifting play, uh, how how incorrect it is to play mm. ten to eight. You know, I I mm. rolled out this position on my computer, and you know, three to one and eight to six are equal, but the play ten to eight lifting just doesn't seem to work, despite the fact that it leaves you know four six and double fives from from the roof, and what. What do you think the reasons are for 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 this? You know, do you think just you just need to make those points, and the threat of making them is what might cause the guy to pass after you hit, or or 
what's happening here? Well, well, the reason that I played 10-8 was that the, the thinking was that if he danced, it's going to be double pass anyway, and it is a double pass. So I didn't find myself the reason to leave 6-4 and double five. Uh, also, like 5-1, 4-1, he's going to hit me on the four point. Mm -hmm. then I probably do not want to have a, a blot on the 10 point. That's why. But apparently it was a big mistake. So um, um, if he enters, then having a 10 point, it's probably much, much better. Because it increases the numbers you have to attack him again, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or low, like, for 5-2, I have, like, double shot instead of on single shot, or 6-3, or, sorry, 5-4. In, in case I have an ace to hit, uh, you know what I mean? If he, yeah. he enter with 5-4. <clears throat> Some tough cube decisions here. And it's interesting because we know that the first two positions end up being doubles. That mm -hmm. in this instance, even if he did enter with 4-1 or 5-1 and hit you back, it would then again be Double, another, yeah. <laughs> another, mass, another massive cube, right? So... Uh, right. For, so what for is sure. it to worry about? I yeah. probably miss it too. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing it yeah. didn't happen then. But yeah. um, and then obviously the game turned out the way um, the computer expected it to with the initial cubes, and then you get to this spot where it's just like a massive double pass, right? Where it would yeah, it's interesting. Back in it's many things are connected. So once you make a mistake uh, in the beginning, then this mistake leads to another mistake, another mistake. You know, typical example is, of course, miss the cube. Once you miss, then next row you will miss again and again and again. But uh, also check a play as well. Uh, you make, uh, you know, a uh, wrong check a play that gives you a uh, like complicated um, position uh, that leads more, even more difficult decision uh, in the rate uh, in in the future. Um, so <laughs> it's it's all connected, pretty much. Yeah, you know, once you get the like the wrong game plan in your head, uh, and mm -hmm. you start mm -hmm. moving with that game plan, it's it's hard to break out of that pattern. Similar with the cube, you know, if it wasn't good enough in your mind then, and then it got a little bit worse, you know, then of course you're going to, you're going to miss it again, or it stayed the same. And those repeat cube errors can just happen over and over again. So I'm on to game 23 and I'm just clicking through. And the only error I think I see in the game is from either side, maybe except for the, his initial is this cube. On move number seven, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's funny. Similar winning chances as the last one. Um, mm -hmm. Very similar gammon chances as the cube in the game before. Instead of it being thirty-three, it's like twenty-nine percent. But this one isn't isn't a double, and it's not a double by a by a wide margin. And the other one, it is a double by a really big margin. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. With similar winning chances and similar gammon chances, what's the difference between these positions that would make the other one a cube, but not this one? Is the game just not over as often with a hit? Well, first of all, he has more winning chance. So okay. this position is much worse than before. You know, before his winning chance, his winning chance uh, is almost, you know, much, much lower than this. But this, he can win. He, he could also win gammon. So um, this is much better for him. Um, plus the game might continue, like uh, say I roll four and say he dances. Of course, it's a huge market loser, but uh, still the game continues. Uh, I'm not even sure, maybe it's a stake. Like say I roll like four one um, hit and make the 15, then he followed by his dance. Is it like pass? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he has good structure on the other side of the board. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he has he's something to fight back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's interesting. So if we go through this game. What happens in game twenty-four here? So we have five-one. Ah, this is my. This is the game of the match here. Move number. Game number twenty-four. This. So this is the game where Abe decides to beaver you. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So, are you often beavered in money games? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no, no, not at all. So this was this was definitely shocking being there, and you know, uh, Abe has like tells. You know, uh, when 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 you gave this cube to him, move number what was it? Move number six or seven in this game. Mm-hmm. The way he paused, right? Instantly, I know he's thinking about beavering you, right? Yeah, of course, of course. It's not going to be a pass. 100%. No, of course not. Of so, course not. But playing mm. with Abe, he loves to throw in the beaver. He loves to throw mm-hmm. it in there. He just mixes mm-hmm. it in every now and then just to keep people honest. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep people honest. Just to keep them honest, you know, make sure you no one's really stepping out of line, you know, see how comfortable <laughs> you feel doubling the guy when, you know, the guy's going to beaver you. Even though it's nowhere near a beaver and it's like a 30% error to, to, to beaver this cube, uh, it was an interesting cube from your perspective because you still have these two guys trapped back on the 18 point. And you don't often mm-hmm. see cubes like this when there aren't men trapped behind some sort of structure on the other side of the board. You're just up 17 pips. Yeah, um, but I have so many spares and I have so many lords to lower jokers, like double five, four, double three, and double two. Um, so I, I thought it's okay. You know, I have up 17 pips. I probably have like six shakes. Uh, until I lower a joke, I until I have to uh, leave a shock, leave an anchor, and um, I, it turned out to be a small notable. I made a lower out, and it was like point uh, oh one nine. It's like a two percent error to double here. Oh, that's but it. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, definitely not beaver at all. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, obviously, you've seen tons of positions like this before, where you've spotted these cubes, which is why you know that they're doubles, right? So, so what factors? It could be a double. I thought, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what? So what factors are you looking at, like in a position like this, to determine whether or not it would be a cube in a spot where, well, you know, he has complete. Double. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Well, um, race three. Race yeah, I have uh, 17 pips. That that's okay. Maybe I should have more than if uh, it's really, really a double. But 17 pips is already in range. I thought, and uh, the spear checkers. Um, I have a bunch of spear checkers to play with. Bunch of spear uh, checkers on the outside of so to play in. You'll have tons yeah. of sixes to play as you try yeah, to roll doubles sixes. to get off of. Mm-hmm. 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 So I, I can comfortably wait at least five shakes, six shakes until I lower doublet, you know? Yeah, it's an interesting spot for sure. Those two factors, yeah. So when you were in the middle of this game and he beavered you, what were you thinking then? Uh, <laughs> that was inter- I mean, funny. I mean, we all laughed, I remember. But yeah. uh, <laughs> was, uh, back of my head, hilarious. of course, I... I it, it cannot be a beaver, you know. My my double can be a mistake, but it cannot be a beaver. That's for sure. <laughs> so yeah. So were you? I mean, obviously, you know your positive equity in this position, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I I thought that maybe he didn't do a running tip count. You know, I I did this game. I, I knew this was a seventeen tips uh, yeah. exactly because there's no shot ex- exchanged, so it was easy to track my last read. You know. But maybe he didn't. Maybe he thought, you know, it's just outrageous that uh, I have a bar point anchor, and, you know. So if he didn't know the uh, lace, then maybe it's a double. Maybe it's a beaver. You know, if I'm not up seventeen pips, it's gonna be a beaver. You know, if I'm yeah. up like, if in, even lace, it's a, or it's it is a beaver. If I'm only beaver. like five pips, maybe beaver. You know, but yeah. uh, seventeen pips, n- no, I, I I didn't think so. So were you happy that he beavered you in this game? Like, were you, was that something you were like, okay, yeah. Yeah, like, I was happy. I was like, okay, come on. <laughs> like, uh, let's go. Yeah. Then I wrote double two immediately. So of course I was very happy, you know? Yeah, then double twos came immediately and you were able to break from the 18 point. And I'm sure he's sitting there 
with that four cube in his hand going, oh man, what did I do, right? Because now <laughs> you went from being up 17 to being up, what, 25 pips with him on roll. Yeah. And then his first shake is uh, the double fours to get to bring that, that racing lead down. And as the game went on, he was able to make up that racing lead even after the immediate double twos and was able to sneak in a redouble. He won. He won it. Yeah. And he ended up winning the game. And it's funny because he got to a position on move 18 where he, he missed a recube to eight, mm. which I thought was interesting. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously he doesn't, I mean, it, it's an easy position to count, right? But if you just kind of eyeball it, maybe you don't think it's, it's good enough. And then he rolls the immediate double six, um <laughs> yeah but uh it's a small small double very it's small very, very two. small it's, it's it's nothing i i can see that he did not double because he has you know, like a semi gap on the five point you know um so i don't blame him not doubling maybe, maybe it's better to, not to double in in practice maybe it leads to more difficult decision um if he was normal then i roll normal as well you know yeah i would say that um if you were him it's probably if it was this was your cube decision, I would say it's probably better for you not to double. But for him playing mm -hmm. you, I would say that it's probably better to double. Yeah, right? if you had known if you had known that this yeah. is different your cube, of course yeah. it's your cube. But let's say let's say I'm uh, yellow, I'm in the box in the shirt, and I'm playing against like five people. I would uh, not okay. double this. Also, yeah. I knew that this is a double because after one this, if I double here, everybody takes. You know, everybody. But takes. if I waited one loss then you know maybe two two takes and three pass or something like that could happen so uh, i can i can get benefit out of it you know definitely yeah i can see that for sure uh the beaver game you know you don't you don't see those well i see them all the time i play with them i play with them a few times a week but but <laughs> yeah i only get beavers and my opponent's lead is stuck or get you know steaming you know so uh, i often you know very often know that end is near <laughs> the session gonna be like up the, very the soon. session is closed you know it's, it's almost done the the ending credits are starting to roll you know if i don't win this game we're calling it quits you know but uh but he did turn the game around he did end up picking up yeah. the four points there and i mean it was just incredible just watching it just going wow you know and then he just rolls and rolls and you start to roll a little less than average. He starts to roll a little bit above average and then the numbers just turn and then you're going, I can't believe this guy just beavered me and then won this game after I rolled <laughs> double twos, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. I, I forgot the lacoon option, actually. I should have lacooned when I was beavered, but uh, yeah, I, in, in I, our, I, I forgot it. <laughs> in, our, in our game, we play with beavers, but we don't play with raccoons. Um, Okay. But but I, I like the raccoon option, too, because then it makes the guy who's beavering be honest, too. Right. <laughs> you know, if you if you know that I can just go, OK, you want to you want to beaver me, let me turn the cube to eight and let you just hold on to that. Then then maybe you're 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 not you're not so willing to just beaver me in the future, too, you know, especially <laughs> when it's when it's crazy, when it's ridiculous. But, you know, who's to say what's ridiculous? Um, I'm just going through game 25. And there really wasn't much. Ah, okay. I can see this 3-1 here, move 10. That was interesting. I remember this during the the actual session deciding whether or not I was going to come off my anchor or whether or not I was just going to bear down on the four point and try to make that first. And, um, it's hard to pick the time in these spots when you're, you're going to try to run off the anchor because you, you'd like to do it while the guy's on the roof. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of a better time to start running than when my opponent is on the roof. So I can certainly see why that seemed like a, a good option here. So after like reviewing the match and looking over it yourself, like would you be able to find the non-running option? At, like what would point to running or not running uh, for you in this spot? 
Yeah, this kind of position is very hard to explain. You have to just sense it. You know, you have just to, you know, sense the light timing to come out with the right number. For example, in this position, if say I roll like, uh, I don't know, I mean, six, one, for example, then definitely I have to run. Yes. But maybe I don't want to, you know, come out of my 18 and 17. It just leaves too many, too many shots. Um, so I can just wait one more roll. Everything is, uh, it's, there are many reasons, you know, um, plus I, I de- don't really want to put the uh, checkers on the eight points and hiding my precious builder from nine point to eight point as well. So this is like combined reason, I guess. It's interesting. And as the game goes on, seems to be it. You end up winning a game in that game. Congratulations. <laughs> and then we've got move na- game number 26. And I flagged I flagged the 6-3 here. Uh, move number 9. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering what your thoughts were on this position. I rolled it out, and I guess just making the three-pointers right, followed by making the bar, and then slotting six to three very close Mm -hmm. behind so i mean i i I know why i've got my feelings right but just for the viewers i'm just asking the questions open-endedly to get your response but but why is making the three point um better than trying to stop the opponent from making the second anchor by blitzing yeah i i hit on that this point uh to avoid him making second anchor. And I thought, you know, I have all the builders and he has no board. So I, you know, I could have done that. But then making a three point is actually, maybe, you know, letting him having a deuce point is not bad, you know, because say I make a three and he rolls deuce, you know, I, he's completely primed, you know, so he will, he, he has no timing. Um, if you see the pip count, I am up 54 pips, meaning he has only down 54 pips, right? Uh, after 60, maybe 63 pips. But he should be down like at least like uh, almost at least like 100, pip, 100 pips to to take the cue, you know? If he wants to play comfortable one to back game, he has to be down like more than, or much more than 100 pips. And he is much shorter than that. And um, so I can just let him, you know, make a deuce point. You know, I just make a three point and just see what happens. If he does make a deuce point, so be it. If he doesn't, then I keep going for the deuce point. So if you were to notice that the guy just doesn't have the timing to play an ace deuce game, you can just try to prime him knowing that his position won't be strong enough to hold that sort of game. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. Okay, and coming around, coming around. And I have another position flagged in this game, and that's move number 19. This is one of the more interesting plays of this session, in my opinion. Oh, okay, so before we m- move to uh, 16, yep. uh, look how the game flows, you know? Because of my, you know, wrong hit on the deuce point he actually made a 3-1 back game with a great timing mm. <laughs> you, you, you understand if i didn't do that if i just make three point then he will not have this position he will not have this game basically or or even made the bar right and even if he does fall into a 3-1 game and you chose to make the bar instead of the three point which was also like the next best play very yeah. close then he just has mm-hmm. four guys trapped behind a five prime and how does he win that game either right Light, light. Making a bar and slotting three, it has the same concept. Um, you know, let him make an anchor and break the timing afterwards. Because when the guy has a double anchor game like this, like a back game, and you have the bar made against the 24 point, it, it, it's it's going to be very difficult for them to win by hitting you before you've crunched, right? Because it's difficult for mm-hmm. him to recirculate his checkers and get those guys out. But with the open seven point and with the three point now being occupied by the white team, you know, he could win this game going forward or backwards, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what I have here, 
I moved number 16. He has great game. And I already, you know, regret what I've done. Mm. So anyway, my 6-1 on move 16. No, I, I was also looking at, no, move ah, 19, okay. the 4-3. Oh, 19. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The 10, 6, 7, 3. Uh, 10, 10, 6, 7, 4 is the best play. Yeah, and he's got the okay. five-point made on the other side. He's got the three-point made on the other side. He's got a bunch of guys mm. in the outfield. So mm, mm. so, so why are we volunteering 20 numbers to be hit? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about it. I, I thought about the 7-4 as well. Um, the first of all, it's not double shot, actually, because he's not going to hit with a six. He shouldn't hit with a six is what you're telling me. Yeah? I, I don't think so. I don't think so, uh, unless maybe with six six, but but uh, not yeah, six, a single six. six, six. I, I, yeah, six six probably, but not uh, normal six, because he's not ready yet, and he could have you know he will get many many more shots in the future anyway, so he will not you know, take the opportunity. So uh, so I'm going to give a single shot, but his ball is not really ready yet i mean he has some sort of structures but um it, it looks it, okay it looks a little dangerous no i mean a little mm. bit a little bit yeah 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 the, definitely i did not want to get hit here yeah. i do not want to get hit with four but uh, it's all, all relatedness you know uh five to two uh moving checker from five points to this point is a big, big minus. You know, it increases a um, future uh, potential shots as well. Um, while seven, four, if I get away with it, seven, four is like big advantage. You know, you're adding um, extra builders on the four point. You keep the uh, four spare checkers on the five point. Um, so it happened to be wrong, you know, but I play five two thinking that maybe I roll something small in the next shake. So I will reach the same position without giving him a double shot or a single shot. That was my thinking. Hmm. Yeah, this is a, a tough play for sure. I think also maybe one of the upsides is maybe somebody doesn't know they're not supposed to hit you with a six two, and then you could just enter an attack on the ace and get rid of that game completely. One, one moment, somebody at the door. All right, time out. One moment, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, Sorry, Justin. Uh, could you pause like two minutes or three minutes? Because sure, they told me that I got a, a PCL result and I, I should get it. Um, it should be uh, negative, I hope, but I have to get it now. So <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> I'll be back soon. All right. <laughs> all right. And if it's if it's positive, we're stopping the stream and I'm shutting my computer down. <laughs> I can't let it get infected. All right. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, bye. All right, we're back on. And just looked at this volunteering play. And Abe hit you, of course. And <laughs> then he then he snuck the recube in. And on to game 27. So, ah, yeah. So I didn't get a chance to roll this out. And the difference uh, on move number three here between mm -hmm. like the best play and the second best play is almost nothing. But I, I, uh -huh. I think I think it's super interesting here that that the computer says it's still right to run. This is one of these that I was going to roll out that I, I forgot to to see if it was. This is get... exactly it's this exactly about the Mitch's position, Mitch's book. You know the the back checker. Ah, okay. Strategy. I forgot his his title. His, yeah, his, back checker his, strategy, his, volume three. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, uh, you know, he analyzed those kind of positions uh, very, you know, many times. And uh, it was a great book. Um, I so I knew that the twenty two thirteen was um, 
reasonable choice, but I didn't do it because the race, I'm a little bit down. And plus, if I run, then I have six shakers on the midpoint, which is not ideal. Um, that's why I didn't do it. It happened to be the second best. It's very yeah, close. Yeah, the position really isn't worth much. I just thought it was interesting here that like, even though you were down a, a pip in the race after the roll and he's on roll, that it would still be right to, to go which I thought was pretty wild. And the double fours all the way down. And I guess on move eight, we have a double and a pass, but it's super small. And, ah, yeah, the two one, move number nine. Hmm. So... I mean, that checker on the five point looks really nice hitting the guy on the three point. What, what, what reason is it that, that that's wrong? Are you just trying to avoid having a fourth and fifth guy behind that, behind that five prime? Mm. Well, one, one of the things is that uh, if he enters three, then I will not be happy. If he enter with one or two, I still have a huge gap on the bar point. So it's not like I have, you know, uh, five points from four to eight uh, with that gap on the seven. So it's very valuable. If I don't have a gap on the seven, it's very valuable to hit a uh, three point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But since I have a gap on the seven, even if he doesn't hit me back, just enter one and the two and he's still ready to come out. Mm. Uh, so hitting on a three has less value than those position. And of course you would like to step up on 22. Um, but yeah, that, that's the reason I guess. And I also love that the difference between five to four and 16 to 15 is as big as it is mm -hmm. because of the duplication of the number four mm -hmm. to hit you and to hop mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good that's position. It. But the hitting with yeah. the two and stepping up with the ace also duplicates the three, and that also looks good. So it's 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 definitely interesting to see that that one is is such a, a big mistake there. And you said it's because of the open seven. So if the guys on the nine were on the seven point, the hit would must be correct then, because he could enter on the ace or deuce, and then he wouldn't be able to just escape, right? Yeah, I just checked the position with seven point. Uh, field, you know, the yep. instead of the nine point, seven point is uh, field, then two one is hit. Yeah, makes sense because the, the open seven, even if you successfully get mm -hmm. away with um, not getting hit back, that doesn't mean he just mm -hmm. can't leave next time. Yeah, that's an interesting position. So the game continues. Oh, the 6-3 on move 14 was a great shot. 5-3 hits, enters, double fives. 6-2, 3-2. Wow, that game turned around, huh? Yeah, look at the move number 18 and move 19. Lots of turn around. Yeah, I mean... Two <laughs> double twos points on you. Two three, he's like dead. Then yeah, immediate so one, six, of course. immediate <laughs> ace six, of course. Then you anchor and play down, and it's just over. Yeah. Those those ace sixes from the roof are uh, <laughs> are 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 always really brutal numbers. You know, always really brutal. The ace six from the roof. So I'm on game 28, 6 4. Uh, this is interesting. So I So move number three here, right? You have a 6 4 mm -hmm. to play from the roof. The guy's got the ace point made. You're entering on the 21. That's forced, right? Why is 13 to 7 volunteering the six shot better than hopping out? Mm. Well, I chose the wrong play, but yeah, I guess I, yeah. <laughs> he is up uh, so much. You know, I'm down nine pips after the roll anyway. 
And so I, I, uh, I guess I wanted to have an anchor. Say he hits with a six, then I have a two or four to make, a, make an anchor in his board. That's, a, that's very variable, you know? So you're, so you're down in the race, so why are you racing? And with two guys in your home board, if he does roll a six, it increases the likelihood that you make an, an anchor, which is something that mm-hmm. is less likely if you get hit when you're on the 15. Yeah. If he doesn't roll a six on the hit inside, then I have a chance to make a bar point as well. Mm. Why well, my play as what I'm trying to do actually. You, you know, if I get hit, I'm not happy. If I don't get hit, I'm still not, you know, trying to make a new point. You, you know, I'm not slotted on the bar point. Mm. It's interesting. I, I always find these um, sixes from the roof to be interesting whether or not you know you come to the 18 in some spots whether or not you hop into the outfield or whether or not you play down Mm -hmm. Uh, if you ever did a lecture on those one day at a tournament and wanted to charge me ten dollars to listen to it i would pay i would cool of course (laughs) no i i mean in in general if you are down in the last 10 to place 18 uh, sorry uh 13 to 7 if you're up in the race, you tend to play 24-18 or coming out the outfield, mm-hmm. I, I think. Um, yeah. That's like a general general guidance, of course. And move number nine, we had this double take here. It was a small no double. Um, it's one of these volatility positions. And as I go through 2 one, six, four, just small things that no one has time to think of when they have to pay one and a half percent for every second that you think. And nothing big in that game, game number 29. Ah, this play, move number seven, the six five. Mm. To make to make the five or not to make the five, that is the question. Mm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. how, how difficult is it to not just make the five point? It looks like a great shot, but like on second analysis, you can definitely see why it could be better to just make the eleven, right? Mm-hmm. 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 So any thoughts? Yeah, well, you you could say you could easily see the reason why they're making five is so wrong compared to coming out. Of course, I I don't have a timing. You know, I'm about to crunch, so I could make a five point later, but uh, I could not. I may not come out. Um, I may not lower six in a couple of rows. You know. Yeah, you could crunch so for it's sure. A timing. It's a timing. Yeah. So it's just a question of timing, denying yourself the five point here, because if you don't roll a six or a one five on the next few rolls, your whole position just kind of comes forward. Um, mm-hmm. Also interesting that, you know, that that those guys are your kind of, even though it's it's not really far enough back, they, they if you make the 11, it does stop some of the numbers from running with his back checker too, right? Right, right. Like six, four is... Um great example but also like six two yep. you will get double shot uh you know uh yeah so it is some value to coming out get some outfield control yeah, like yeah. one five for example one five he will get the uh, like triple shot in top of single shot yeah because or he six just... one two yeah especially number like five one's a, a, a good one to see because you know, if you just made the five point and the guy rolls one five, he just comes to the seven and you don't roll the ace, he's just gone, right? If he comes out to the eighteen, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, he rolls five one the other way, he's coming out into the triple shot, and um, it definitely increases the likelihood that he's going to be back on the roof uh, soon. Mm-hmm. 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 So that. that that's... But main reason is the timing. Main, main reason is the timing. And wow, that's that's a tough one to find at speed. And Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. game 30, final game. Double take. So 
So blue cubes here with one guy back. He's on the roof. Very strong cube. He takes, of course. Again, no problem. It is a take, though. Looks scary to me. Um, I can definitely see how you get a take out of this. And this happens. And he anchors. What else could you ask for? 4-3. Starts the counter prime. And... Oh, uh, this is a great game. 6-4. 4-3. Ah, this redouble. Yeah, the redouble on move 14 is... Uh, it's a good... It's a good cube. And that's a... It looks... Even though I can see the the information on the position, right? I can see that it's a super easy take. I could see a lot of people having a hard time taking this cube on the roof against that sort of structure. Yeah, I think it was Nebza Dogan that uh, he claimed it was a pass. Um, I think he even bet, I'm not sure. He did but, after uh, the game. I wasn't going to throw the guy under the bus like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It just simply shows that how difficult the position is. Yeah, yeah. You know, player like Nevza Dogan uh, could be, uh, you know, fooled uh, by the nature of the position. But this is a take uh, simply because um, he's running out of the timing. So I have some chance to, he has some chance to crunch his balls uh, before he rolls a four. And uh, also, say he rolls like four, two, he has to come out with a four, yeah? Mm hmm. Then I have some some good aces from the roof. Let's say like one three hit loose and he one. Then game is over. No, one one six of course. You know double ace. Uh, you know even one five. I one five is a, one five is a great yeah. shot too. I, I, any aces yeah. that's not yeah. one. You know is is a pretty good shot. Except for I guess one two and one four. But you no know, one two would be great. And if came out. Yeah. Go ahead. Then not too many games. Um, I lose only 11%, 12%. It's less than uh, original position. Uh, I mean, original means that initial positions, you know, initial position, you lose like 12% or 13%. The starting position of the back, I mean. Before anyone's rolled, that's how many games yeah. you're likely yeah. to lose before mm -hmm. even the first mm -hmm. roll on average. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I could see that, right? Because at... at it's it's unlikely he's going to close out more than one checker and you don't have many guys in the outfield. So you don't have many yeah. crossovers once this first guy enters to get off the gammon. So with low gammons um, against you, you just have to ask yourself in, in what fact, are your winning chances? In fact, the most gammons, gammon win comes from when I enter and hit Ruth. Say he was four and I go <laughs> yeah. one three, then he hits me back. In this case, I could lose gammon easily. I was thinking that, you know, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I have a great chance. You know, he might dance and I could have a win game. So um, I I would be happy about this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So overall, I don't lose so many gammons. You know, I have reasonably uh, enough winning chance. Uh, yeah, that's an easy take. Uh, so in a spot like this, what could make this position a pass? Is there anything with two guys back behind that sort of structure? Like, would he need more timing? Would he, you know, like, uh, is there just nothing that would make this even close to a pass? Not, not anything. Mm. Doesn't appear. Maybe his anchor was split. Maybe it's uh, it's not gonna be a pass, but it's much stronger. Maybe. Oh, it's a pass actually. If he was just on the twenty three and the twenty two instead of with the twenty two point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of his um, numbers that would kill him just you know like double fives would be disastrous, right? Um, this way. Mm -hmm. But double fives the other way plays smooth. Right. Right. And so like his oh, worst, by the way, 5-1 yeah. after the double was also a draw some uh, um, discussion. Do you remember? 
Oh yeah, Nevzat said that he would, didn't want to make the bar. I remember that like mm-hmm. it was yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. TV time, in TV time, it is yesterday, but in real time, it's been a few weeks. But I remember he said he wouldn't make the bar. He would just try to play flexible and just go to the six or something. And I'm like, no, mm-hmm. no, 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 <laughs> because a six goes from like uh, yeah. his 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 best his worst number to like his, his worst entering number to like his best number now, you know, it's like, you can't give the guy the exactly, super joker. Yes. Yeah. Whereas you, you make this, the guy rolls one six. He's really, 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 really feeling bad versus feeling fantastic. You know? Yeah. See, the swing on the six one is just too huge. You can't, you but can't I, take I it. I think he wanted to bet you on this one too, though. I don't remember that about that. Looks like you missed an opportunity then. <laughs> so yeah, six three four two, and he does roll. But, the but you know what? I, I think Nevda uh, would like to bet uh, to run something. If he he pays mm. something, he will remember more. You know what yeah. I mean? I think I, he, he kind of knew that he's likely to lose the bet, but uh, he don't care. You know, he has money, so he just wanna you know bet. And uh, if he wins, then he's happy. Of course, he will lose, he will remember more. That's I. I, I, I I have this problem too. I have this problem too, Mm -hmm. but I do it like in the opposite way sometimes where like, I'll have a checker play to make. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and I go, Ooh, which way should I go? You know, both game plans seem enticing. Right. And I have a feeling that I should go this way versus another way. But for some reason, I'll just choose the opposite way. Just so when the computer tells me how stupid I was, I'll remember it better for next time. (laughs) Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but i generally do that in practice um yeah of course yeah not, that's a good good idea not for not for money or <laughs> but but yeah and then i get something to add to my folder of blunders well that is it that's game 30 and after this game you are up one point <laughs> after all that only one point after okay, after like 30 that. games you are up one whole point uh congratulations <laughs> okay <laughs> you know uh so i take it yeah yeah you know it's definitely better than being down a point right um the game is super volatile and abe is playing pretty good at this point you know i i, I don't know what his pr is after these 30 games i know what it is after the 45 game session uh episode four is going to be the next 15 games and that'll be the last one of this and then i'll try to compile the chouette with you, Abe and Nevzat together and get that done and up. But thank you for coming okay. Mochi, again today and talking about these positions. I, I love this. This is my, my favorite part of these sessions, getting to go over some of these with you. You know, hopefully I get to learn something. Hopefully the viewers get to learn something and keep coming back to these videos years after year after year, because, you know, as you, you know, you start, everyone starts at a certain level, right? And you learn things and you pick up things and then you come back to the same material again when you're better and you pick up new things. And that's how I learned backgammon, watching the old uh, falafel and your commentary videos from tournaments back in the day. And I would just go back to them year after year and just watch them over and over again. And uh, I play okay now. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Yeah, more than okay. <laughs> thank okay, you, thank, thank, thank you, you, Justin. Fantastic. All right, Mochi. Yeah, commentary is awesome. And uh, looking forward to the next one. Thank, thank you. you. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Ciao.